some of the most pirate-prone waters in the world. Uh, warning shots so far have deterred all attacks. And... The Gulf of Aden. There was an attack that took place there mm -hmm. on one skiff yesterday morning. Having the armed security team is the best solution to uh, protect the ships against the piracy act. Um, okay, dangerous areas, pretty much all of it we're in now. There are pirate groups working in this area. We've been given unusual access to see for ourselves what sailors go through. But to see from Muscat Harbour at the start of a 4,000 kilometer voyage. For the next 10 days, this tanker will be my home. It's carrying nearly 100,000 tons of fuel oil to Italy. Sailing past Somalia, through the Gulf of Aden, and up the Red Sea to Suez. The threat from Somali pirates in speedboats called skiffs will be ever present. We're getting on board this big 250 meter tanker, and uh, they're loading all the supplies on first. You can see the razor wire up there, but they've already got in place and they're going to be hardening the ship a bit further on as we uh, enter into the high-risk area. Yep. Okay. Oh, I've got to stay on until the chair comes and yeah. It's not an easy journey for someone in a wheelchair. Right. Yeah, welcome on board, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. Chief officer, yeah? Great. Sure. Hang on a sec. It's okay. I'm... Fantastic. Good stuff. Thanks. Okay, step coming up, Stuart. Okay. That's great. Brilliant. Fantastic. That's lo lo bloody luxury. <laughs> great. <laughs> The route we're taking is a vital one for global trade, all the way around the coast of Arabia, connecting the oil fields of the Gulf to consumers in Europe. Last year, there were 151 pirate attacks in this area. Piracy has become a fact of life. Uh, now they are, they are everywhere now. <laughs> I mean, the, the, uh, the reports everywhere. They cover, I said, the Gulf of Aden, Arabian Sea, uh, Northern Indian Ocean. And uh, they reach all the uh, way to the near near Hormuz. There are some attacks there. The ship has an armed protection team, former British Royal Marine commandos. Um, since I've been doing this work, um, I've had to fire three times, three warning shots here, yeah, on a various different jobs here. Yeah. Last four is nine six nine two. It's a controversial measure. Not everyone approves of having weapons on commercial vessels. But the owners made it mandatory for this route after one of their tankers was hijacked last year. Test firing the team's weapons on day one is standard procedure. These rifles have a longer range than the pirates' machine guns and they're intended to warn them off at a distance. You've done these voyages several times. Have you had to fire up these rifles? Yes, on several occasions, yes. Um, and generally speaking, from my experience, this is the only thing that they will understand. They take little notice of anything else. Um, so a, a perfect weapon for the job. Critics of having armed security teams on board will say, well, this is only going to make the whole business of piracy more violent. What are your rules of engagement? Rules of engagement are... Um, as back in the UK, you can only use lethal force as a very last resort in order to preserve life. Uh, we have various levels of escalation um, initially. If we see a skiff or a hostile um, attack coming towards us, um, we will try and contact the vessel initially on VHF to ascertain their intentions. Um, but generally speaking, it's pretty obvious when it's going to be hostile or not. What we do then is show a presence on the bridge so they can see that there's a security team on board. 
Following that, we'll show weapons, we'll raise the weapons in the air, just to emphasise the fact we are armed. Um, if they persist, we'll consider using flares, but generally speaking, things happen very fast. After that, we'll consider using warning shots, and in my experience, nine times out of ten, this generally is enough to focus their attention and uh, deter them from attack. Deterring pirates takes many forms. It's called best management practice. It includes hardening a ship with razor wire before it sails through pirate waters. This tanker may dwarf the pirates' boats in size, but the pirates use ladders and grappling hooks, and they can scale a seven-meter hull with terrifying speed. Once on board, they'll be racing for the bridge to take control and capture the crew. Great, OK, if we could just have a uh, wander around the stern. Um, we just want to look at the defences, really, and see if there are any vulnerable areas. Mark Eason is a former sergeant major in the Royal Marines. As team leader, contracted by the shipping company, it's his responsibility to make this vessel as safe as possible. It can be used to assist pirates in boarding. Um, so anything like that, we'll get it tucked away in the bosun's locker or something like that. Yeah, OK. The stern of the vessel is is the most vulnerable area. Uh, so if possible, if you've got the wire on board, I'd like to see another coil of wire just around the stern. Maybe from somewhere around here. So, uh, uh, so uh, one more layer, you mean? That would so be one great, layer, yeah. yeah. But as you can see from the, the bridge rings there, uh, we've got cover from the stern from that bridge ring. And the same on the port side as well. And regarding the fire hoses and all, just... Yeah, have more than anything, it's a, it's a great visible deterrent. Because if we do see any skiffs, uh, they'll be looking at us. So if we activate the fire hoses, they'll know that we know. Uh, so ev everyone's aware. So that might just be enough to deter them. One technique the pirates use, if they can get close, is they use a grappling hook and a bucket to try and drag this off the railings. So if you if they use wire or something a bit, a, a bit more robust, that that'll be great. Yeah. Putting out coils of razor wire like this. It's just one of the protective measures that ship's crews are now using to defend themselves against pirates when they go through the high-risk area that comes alongside using water cannon, electrified fences and armed security guards. If you see anything suspicious at all, please notify the officer of the watch or don't be afraid to shout out and let one of the security team know. There'll be one of us on the bridge 24 hours a day. Down in the mess room, the security team leader briefs the whole ship's crew on the risks they're about to face. There are some red crosses on here. I haven't inundated this with crosses. These show areas where and positions where there have been recent attacks. And only three days ago, a vessel was pirated in this location. As you can see from our position, which is currently about here, we're now right in the thick of it. Um, OK, dangerous areas. Pretty much all of it we're in now. There are pirate groups working in this area. We should have a bit of protection from the warships down here, but we still mean, need to remain vigilant. Pirate attack! Pirate attack! The captain attack, sounds the drill, hoping attack. they will never have to do this for Security. real. Security! Code red! Code red! All officers crew to move to the Citadel. Code red! Yeah, once everybody moves... The whole crew and our team Practice what to do if pirates succeed in getting on board. Evacuate everyone down to this control room, the Citadel, and drive the ship from here while radioing for help. Third engineer, fourth engineer, electrical engineer, bosun. The system only works if everyone's accounted for. If the pirates capture a single seafarer, it turns into a hostage situation. Then warships don't usually send anyone to the rescue. There was an attack <clears throat> that took place there mm -hmm. by one skiff yesterday morning, yeah. 2nd of March. Merchant vessel pirated approximately 150 north, mm -hmm. uh, nautical miles northeast of Mazira. So that's at 1634 north. So one was actually pirated there four yes. days ago. Mm -hmm. Literally 20,000 ships are passing through this area every year. At any one time, there are at least 4,000 ships in this whole area. So we're doing what a lot of people are doing the whole time, but 
it is the whole area is considered to be high risk for pirates. And we're currently, right now, about here, just about here. Um, there was a group of suspicious pirate skiffs seen just here four days ago. There was an actual pirating that took place here, just east of Socotra, where a ship was attacked and actually successfully pirated and taken off to Somalia. There was another attack just 24 hours ago here, right at the edge of what's called the internationally recommended transit corridor. This is something where the navies, the world navies, gather together convoys of ships and escort them through what used to be considered the most dangerous part of the voyage. Actually, to be honest, the whole lot is dangerous, but this is where there were, had been a lot of attacks in the past. And there was an approach, but the ship had armed guards on board. They fired, and the vessel is now safe. It's approaching midnight up on the bridge, and the duty watch officer has spotted something suspicious on the radar. A distant blip heading towards us. So as we keep an eye on that, we'll look at it every, every couple of minutes or so. Okay. See if we get any closer. Well, we've got a fairly typical instant here. It's night time, we're up on the bridge, and on the radar they've spotted a vessel that appears to be trying to cross very close to where we're going to be. It's not heading straight for us, it's heading for where we are going to be in a few minutes' time. And it's all about this thing called CPA, closest point of approach. The actual range we are from it is six miles, but in a few minutes' time, it will be just four miles from us. Now, that's still far enough for it to be okay, but if it goes down to about three miles, then the team leader here is going to be a little bit concerned, start putting the laser on it, perhaps wake up some of the guys who are off duty and get some extra sentries out. Night turns to day, sentries change shifts, the ship has settled into a rhythm. But now we have welcome company. A Chinese Navy warship, a long way from home, part of the International Counter Piracy Task Force. It's here to escort us along the 900 kilometer sea lane between Yemen and Somalia, known as the internationally recommended transit corridor. The idea of this is that the world's navies have got together to escort vulnerable cargo as they pass through one of the most pirated stretches of waterway in the Indian Ocean. We're up on the bridge here, and if you have a look at the map, show you exactly where we are pretty much here is the corridor that stretches between Yemen and Somalia or more technically Puntland part of Somalia and the convoy goes in both directions it stretches nearly 600 miles and we are passing down through it here of course this isn't the only pirated part of the Indian Ocean pirates can strike everywhere and indeed they have done uh, quite recently so how does a ship like this protect itself against pirates or even know that they're coming. Well, it's got sophisticated radar and you can see it here, works 24 hours. This shows you the convoy, um, four ships in the convoy. They've each got little, little numbers beside them and you can see the Chinese warship marked there. Obviously, the ships are changing position, distances change, but this will pick up even something as small as a pirate skiff way out to sea there on the horizon they can, they can tell when it's coming from a long way away. Now, a lot of the boats, of course, are completely innocent, but those that are not, um, that start making fast, aggressive approaches, have to be challenged before they can get too close. Behind us, ships line up in convoy. We're all safer together. Pirates can and do climb aboard ships this big. Size alone is no protection. Zero two, I have a four. Uh, Alpha 1 replying, thanks for your assistance. Proceeding in our own. Thank you very much, Zero uh, 2. After two days, the escort departs. We enter the Gulf of Aden, nicknamed by some the Pirates' Playground. Here, the land comes in on both sides narrowing into the Babel Mandeb Strait that separates Africa from Asia. 
It's where many of the hijackings have occurred. Somali pirates overpowering Yemeni fishing boats, taking them over, then using them to sneak up on larger unsuspecting vessels. Early in the morning, the ship goes on full alert. Somewhere off Djibouti, a situation develops. Well, we can go to port a bit now and see if that uh, causes. We'll see if that causes a reaction. Yeah. The watch officers spot suspected pirates up ahead, crossing our bows. I want to go and check the radar and speak to the captain first of all. The ship activates its water cannons to make boarding more difficult. The foghorn is to tell them they've been spotted. Piracy boat approaching, code yellow, code yellow, security alert. This time, it's not a drill. You start getting your body armor on. We've got a couple of skiffs ahead, dead ahead. Uh, grab three mags and we'll go. Now the onboard security team is summoned. They take up fire positions on the bridge wings, although opening fire is a last resort. The two boats you can see there are a suspected pirate mothership and a skiff being towed behind it. That's one of the fast attack boats. And we've had a bit of an alert here because both the ship in front and this ship uh, are pretty convinced that these are pirates just scoping us out. Uh, they're taking no chances. They've got an armed team on board here and they've showed weapons. They've put them up in the air just to make sure that whoever's in that boat that knows that this will be a very hard target to seize. The suspect vessels move off. We get reports they've threatened another ship soon after. They look harmless, and yet it was exactly boats like these that attacked an unprotected sister ship, the MT Zirku, last year. The ship was quickly overrun and hijacked for 75 days. The crew took these pictures. They said it was a living hell. Many of the pirates were drugged and unpredictable, addicted to chewing narcotic cut leaves. He will pull the trigger. Yeah. One of our crew is still haunted by his experience on another that was unprepared for pirates. So they narrowly escaped being hijacked. Four times they fired RPG rocket propel grenade. I'm scared. Looks like I was in the engine room. I feel I'm flying. I'm not touching the ground. Because any time, any moment, that the pirate will come. What about now? How do you feel now? Because you're sailing on this huge, big, floating petrol tank, really. You've got, you know, 95,000 tons of fuel oil on this and they've got pirates in these oceans with rocket-propelled grenades. Yeah, really, I'm scared also. And uh, I talked to my wife with, uh, through the email, and she said, really, they are scared also. And uh, she just said, just keep on praying. Really, I'm scared. So really, before, it's really scary. But now, we feel uh, relieved because of these armed guards we have. Not all flag states permit armed guards. Britain only recently allowed them. This vessel has had to be reflagged to Panama to permit them on board. But the captain has few doubts where he stands. It makes a very big difference, yeah. Having the armed security team is the best solution to uh, protect the ships against the Piracy Act. Plenty of ships are so fast or so high in the water, their owners believe they don't need armed guards. Some companies can't afford them, others disagree on principle. There's also the risk that as this maritime security business grows, 
it will attract fly-by-night operators who shoot at boats indiscriminately. Even some Italian marines recently mistook Indian fishermen for pirates and opened fire on them. At the moment there are talks going on in London to uh, enforce regulations and bring this into the industry. Uh, as Cameron has already said some time ago that British flagships are now going to be permitted to carry armed teams on board. So we need to get the right people of the right calibre in the job. Um, otherwise you're just going to give everyone a bad name. Have you come across cowboys that you worry that they're going to end up holding weapons on ships like this? Uh, only on a couple of occasions. Um, fortunately not with this, uh, not with this company, but um, they are, are short-lived. Um, we, we like to get rid of them at the earliest opportunity.